Rifle is the best. It's the best limestone area in America, possibly the world. Climbing is an inherently selfish pursuit. You know, it's you on the wall consuming roots that other people have created. People like Dave Pegg had a completely different perspective on it and a vision for the climbing community that creates for others and gives back. I think climbers of Dave's generation when they started climbing, there were no roots. He was a fixture of the rifle climbing community, just a classic figure in the canyon. He was like a professor when it comes to climbing, methodical. You could see his experience when he was up on a rock. He's responsible for, I don't know, surely over a hundred roots in the area. At least it seems that way. <laughs> he famously worked on roots for up to 10 years. Easy roots and hard roots, and he would develop entire cliffs with both of those roots so that everyone could climb at them. We were all part of this community, and he always made you feel that. Or you're psyched about climbing. He's psyched for you. Dave was a real pioneer. He's like an artist. He was an artist with his roots. He was an artist with his guidebooks. He started in the mid-90s or so when guidebooks look really different than they do now. It was very unusual to have color photography. You never saw that. Guidebooks were always little more than like hand-drawn maps. Wolverine Publishing brought guidebooks into like the 21st century. They're masterpieces. They provided an area with a sense of community and culture that was unique to that area all around the country. He loved that. Dave was the most friendly, happy guy that I've ever met. This is probably all the more why it was so shocking of what happened. Dave was pretty private about his demons. That darker world, he mostly kept to himself. He had been struggling with depression, which led to insomnia. You really just want to wake up with a little more energy to fight the fight. But then it's two in the morning, and then it's five, and then it's light out again, and you do it all over. And the next evening, you do it all over. How do you cope with that? The sickness that he had, you know, overtook his, his will to live. Drove him out of this world. Dave's death was hard for a lot of us. It's just really a tragic thing. Huge hole in the community when Dave took his own life. When you lose someone like that, there is little you feel like you can do. After Dave passed, you know, there was just roots half done fixed lines hanging and bolts in the wall. And that just immediately struck me that, man, that's, that's so sad. And maybe this is something that I can help with and that I could complete. I just feel like I would get 
a real way to say thanks to Dave, to honor him. I've never drilled a bolt into the wall before or gone about cleaning off suspect quality rock. I didn't know how. It really took being mentored and and shown the way by friends with Andrew and Lee. So that when I was 150 feet up in the air, I know how to drill a bolt right and then lower myself off of it ultimately. It was like I was just getting indoctrinated into being a chaussonier, you know, like they love it. Digging through the choss and finding something amazing underneath it, you make this thing a possible rock climb. The fact that it was something that Dave began with another good friend of ours, Josh, definitely has like a different level of meaning to me. I would realized how much he did for the climbing community. You know, Dave lived a really wide life. Oftentimes people will look at the success of someone's life by its length. But the width of someone's life, the other people they impacted, the the span to which they like spread themselves onto the world is a much more relevant way of judging the success of someone's life. He's the inspiration for me to give something back to the community I'm a part of. That's really why I want to call this route the width of life.